<laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Diana Dorville podcast. Today, I am very pleased to introduce you to Farah El Libani. Born and raised in Egypt, Farah is a mezzo soprano performing between prestigious Opera de Paris, Bolcho in Moscow, Berlin Opera, Biennale dell'Arte di Venezia, and very soon at Dubai Opera. In other words, I am a complete fan. She makes me think of a modern Dalida or Fairos, or a Middle Eastern diva seen at Institut du Monde Arabe, extraordinary exhibition last year in Paris. I hope you will enjoy this episode as much as I did interviewing her. Bonne écoute. Can you briefly walk us through your story? Well, it all started in Alexandria, in Egypt. You know, I'm Egyptian. I was born and raised there. Uh, at the age of 14, my music teacher heard my voice and told me that I need to be singing opera. It's made for opera. So I started to train my voice as an opera singer. I started singing with orchestra as, at a very early age in Alexandria, the Biblioteca Alexandrina, the, the Cairo Opera House. When I was ready vocally, I went to Germany, to Berlin, and I auditioned uh, at one of the most prestigious music schools in the world. In parallel, I continued my studies in uh, architecture. architecture. Exactly. Mm -hmm. During my studies in Berlin, well, I, I sang the role of Carmen. Carmen, yeah, the, you know, the famous opera uh, by Bizet. How I came to Paris, it was a turning point in my career, I have to say. And I started in 2016 in Paris. Amazing. Uh, yeah, as a, in their, you know, young artist troupe. Or, so Paris for me was these three years were really important in my career because they changed so many things. They put me on a different uh, level. They put me on a different map, let's mm -hmm. say. So Paris was a, was really a voyage. <laughs> was a, when I was in Paris, I got to go to Moscow, to Bolshoi, to sing there. I went to China to sing there. I went to uh, Beirut in the Middle East. Uh, I even the Biennale, as you said, the Biennale dell'Arte in Venezia, where I got to sing uh, the French Pavillon to represent actually France and the Paris Opera House mm -hmm. in the French Pavillon with the renowned with artist Xavier Veillon. It's historically very prestigious and. There are so many, I mean Berlin as well, of course, but Paris has something very special because it's also, it's always been uh, a hub for art. So while I was at the Paris Opera, for example, I got to do a lot of collaborations with, uh, for example, Centre Pompidou. I did, um, I did a concert, something there in collaboration with Prada. So sort of intertwining of uh, all the arts are coming together. Exactly. I did also with Musée Rodin for the Paris Opera. Magical, you know, this is my safe haven there. Really? Musée Rodin, I was living next to it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. We talked about, you know, the hors du temps yeah. uh, kind of atmosphere. It's exactly that. It's exactly. I feel like you're not here yeah. now and then. Uh, you yeah. just, yes. Absolutely. I love this mix. I've always loved this mix. Mixing all kinds of arts together. How do you stay on top of your game? <laughs> Any. You see, as an opera singer, because you're doing something physical, You always have to be on top of your game. You yeah. always have to be fit, physically. Yeah. And mentally, of course, but physically. What helps me a lot is actually meditation. It helps me uh, stay focused somehow. I do a lot of breathing exercises that keep me calm. So I'm not nervous before performances. Uh, whenever I feel like I'm losing my ground, meditation makes me Calm. find my anchor. And I always do that before performances, right before going on stage. I just meditate like for like a couple of minutes, closing my eyes and breathing in, having one focus, okay. eliminating anything else around this. It's about visualizing. Okay. I visualize myself on stage in this moment, singing this exact thing that I'm supposed to sing. So yeah, you, you need to be mentally strong, to be able to support <laughs> what your body is doing. In a world that gets increasingly digital, what is your vision on the future of the arts industry and the role of the arts in our everyday lives? Because of COVID, we had to go digital. Everyone, even opera, went digital, which is not very typical opera. Opera was very traditional in a way. What I've tried out during COVID is actually to give online concerts. To just try to be closer to people while everyone was home, you know. So I gave actually to Instagram live concerts. At home? At home. Amazing. From my living room, on Instagram, through my phone, you know. Uh, and I had it was amazing because I didn't expect having all these people watching and commenting and, and people who are not even into opera but they yeah, were just it's a great way to discover exactly and then also 
communicating with the people, with yeah. the audience, yeah. which you don't get at Opera House all the time. It's, there's always this distance. So I was very happy to actually to, to receive questions, to receive recommendations. So I, I really love the fact that I'm getting closer to the audience and to the people, not making opera niche. And the role of opera in uh, people's lives? Um, I think art is a necessity. It's not just a luxury, it's a necessity. People, I think people survive a lot of things because of the existence of, and creation and, and culture. I think it helps a lot in our psychological uh, being and mental uh, well-being. The way we grow. Also. Yes, yes. Make then opera. I think opera transfers people to a different era, different dimension as well. It's an art form that shows excellency, discipline, perfection in a way, uh, very high art. And I think it's it's impressive. People are always impressed by opera, even if they don't like it. Like you would be incredibly um, um, involved with it when you watch opera, when you listen to opera. It takes you, it just takes you. Like all other art forms, but just all of them need to coexist. And it's good to have this diversity. It's good to have this. It's very healthy. <laughs> what is your relationship to uh, clothes and fashion? Always loved fashion and cinema as well. But these are closely intertwined, huh? Yeah, exactly. Cinema defines it, your icons and style. They're very close. Yeah. So I love combining fashion with opera. Uh, I love beautiful uh, couture dresses, like one. But who I mean, doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> but I just love, you know, working on, okay, which look do I feel like for this specific concert in this specific place with this audience, with what I'm singing, you know. For example, I had a concert in Marrakesh that was uh, on France 2. I, I chose um, an Oscar de la Renta Carton, which is very, you know, Moroccan. Mm -hmm. So I like combining modern traditional, with traditional history and historical uh, yeah. for this same event i was actually wearing 200 year old jewelry uh, from the moroccan royal family yeah so you wear history as well exactly so, but you're like in symbiosis with the, with the place where exactly. you're at. exactly Hello. first three words when you think of diana Bold, okay. feminine and powerful i love it yeah. What did you dream of as a little girl and what would you tell her today? What I remember as a little girl, I was always dreaming of being on stage. I have a certain attraction, I'm attracted to the stage. What I would tell my little self is actually keep dreaming. Like don't stop dreaming, don't stop visualizing and seeing yourself doing something. You host the dinner, who do you invite, what do you cook and what do you wear? I would like to invite Dalida. I yes. would yeah, of course. Frank Sinatra as well. Uh, Audrey Hepburn. Uh, maybe the uh, Farouk, King of Egypt, former King of Egypt. And Fairuz, who is the famous Lebanese singer, still is alive, of course. I would love to, for me, it would be a dream to meet her. Uh, there's a very old singer, Asmahen, a uh, Lebanese uh, singer who made her career in Egypt. Uh, Hind Rostom, who is a very famous Egyptian actress. Like She's the Marilyn Monroe of the Middle East. Okay, also, and part of the diva that we talked about. Exactly. She was okay. also in the Diva, the Diva Arab at uh, the Institut Monde Arabe. She and Asmahen, and Fairouz and Dalida, of course. What I'll be cooking is Egyptian, uh, the famous Egyptian soup, uh, Molokheya. <laughs> it's a very famous, uh, typical Egyptian uh, uh, from the pharaohs, actually, a very famous pharaonic dish. Molokheya with chicken and rice, grilled kofta. I'm farm now. What I'll be wearing, it, actually why not, I think for such an event I could be wearing uh, one of the Diana Dorville uh, outfits. Very good answer, Why I'm not? In. <laughs> <laughs> it could fit actually comfortable but still, you know, classy and elegant. It could fit such an event, different. Any music or film that gets you through everything? <laughs> At the moment I'm listening a lot to 60s era. 
Egyptian music in this era. Uh, I feel like I need to discover it more, but I feel like I want to maybe sing it or start, you know, performing this style of music, working on it, and film an Egyptian movie of a, a contemporary uh, director. It's called Feathers. See, it's, it's not a commercial movie. It's a very, you know, artistic, uh, unusual movie. Either safe heaven or dream destination. Being by the sea. I grew up by the Mediterranean Sea in Alexandria. I really feel always the happiest and the safest when I'm near the sea, when I can smell, you know, the, the air. And I feel like you need it. The sun also there is different, the warmth of the sun. My dream destination, actually Latin America. I would love to go there and stay for months. Like with a backpack and just walk exactly. and just try everything try their food, uh, I love dancing, I love their music, I, you know, I love their songs. Yeah. Merci Farah. Thank you Audrey for you, thank you so much, I really enjoyed it. More to come. Yes. <laughs> thank you everyone for listening and very special thanks to you Farah, that was a wonderful time, I loved it. A bientôt.